It's time to play Yuck or Yum. It's a peanut butter pickle sandwich with a twist oh. of jelly. The cream cheese ice cream with candied salmon. It's a very confusing taste. Food crimes, are you guilty? Plus, the dish is always a yum. Boxed cake hacks that taste as good as homemade. Please, please. Coming up next. <laughs> are you ready for season 11? Yeah! investigating especially heinous crimes against foods. That's right, food crimes. Ha! Didn't think I was gonna say that, did you? Well, food's a big problem these days. We are looking at some of the crazy food combos to find out why people are obsessed with, for example, ketchup on salad. Who does that? Uh, oh, or the spaghetti ring and sausage jello molds. Ugh. Or even this popular everything bagel and salmon flavored ice cream. Exactly what I thought. Ew. Why are they beloved by some, even if it's only a few, but some say they are downright criminal? Hmm. So I've shared this concern with many of our guests. Here in our food crime lab is our chief investigator. He has almost 4 million subscribers on YouTube and recently tried some of the most unlawful sounding food combos of all. Please welcome Alonzo Leron. Good morning. How you doing? Now, we looked at some of these food crimes, and I'm just curious: is is it true people are committing more food crimes, or are we just finding out about them because of social media? No, we're definitely having more food crimes today because of social media. Everybody's putting their foods out in the open, and it makes us want to taste it. I've been doing it for the last two years, rude food combos, and the request just gets nastier and nastier. So it's definitely because of social media. Have you ever gotten sick because of a food combo? Yes. Oh, plenty of times. <laughs> Vanilla ice cream and soy sauce has to be the worst combo I can think of. I, it started out good, the soy sauce hits the ice cream, and then my, my stomach rejected it. So, yeah. So that was a food felony? Definitely. I would not recommend that. Right, come on over, Lonzo. When it comes to crimes against food, if you see something, you have to say something. Take a look at this caught-on-tape video of a food crime happening right here at our own office. That's Reynolds, right, an associate producer on our show, very popular. We caught her putting ketchup on her salad, red-handed. She is here now with her best friend, Meredith. Before we get to, to Reynolds here, we need to build a little crime profile, a, a little bit of an insight about how this even happened. So describe when you have noticed this type of criminal behavior. Well, the first time I noticed was our first night as, as roommates in our new apartment. We ordered delivery salads with grilled salmon on the side, and Rennie actually threw out the dressing and went into the fridge and took out the bottle of ketchup and doused her whole salad in ketchup. Mm. And then she had a side plate that she was dipping her salmon into. Um, so that was Side really plate of, sa of ketchup. Of ketchup that she was dipping her salmon. Had you already signed the lease? It was too late to get out it was, of it? It was too, it was too <laughs> late. You're locked in. <laughs> She's a, yeah. Can I taste it? Yeah, go for are, it. Are you guys going to taste oh, it? I, I, oh, I'm, I'm definitely that. not tasting it. Oh, well, Alonzo, you, you go ahead here, please. Yeah, Alonzo, you yeah, got allow it. me. Put, put, pass this down there. Oh. Now, while you taste ketchup and salad, what other weird things, Reynolds? I mean, you're, she's so popular. It caught me so off guard to have such an innocent looking person be a food criminal. I don't know what to say. I mean, Dr. Oz, I put it on everything. <laughs> Any type of vegetable, cottage cheese, baby carrots. Cottage cheese? Yeah. <laughs> what fish. do you like about the taste of ketchup so much you put it on cottage cheese? I don't know. I just love it. Like, there's something, every aspect of it I love, so. All right. True. How many of these bottles do you go through the week? Be honest. She definitely w goes through one squeezy bottle every two days. For sure. Every oh, two days. Yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, so we have an yeah. eyewitness here. We yeah. have a perpetrator who's actually f pretty much confessed. Your thoughts? This is a crime against food. So it's not bad. <laughs> oh. Not bad. I'm glad you're here. No, I'm just, but I'm going to have to be fair. I'm, uh, the truth is, initially, we would think it's not good, but Thousand Island and French dressing also has ketchup in it as well. So mm -hmm. this is definitely not a food mm -hmm. crime. Oh. How do you like that? Hey. I, I gotta say, it tastes, it tastes okay. <laughs> All right. Hey. 
safe. That's up on the side. It's not a food crime. You are released from purgatory. You're back <laughs> on the staff. All right. Reynolds can keep eating your ketchup on salad. <laughs> you know what the thing is? If you eat as many greens as, as Reynolds can eat, God bless you. What are you going to put on it? Glad to hear. All right. Our next guest, Sherry, is turning herself in. Come on over here. Now, Sherry is an interesting story. She has a food crime that caught everybody in my staff, well, off guard. So please describe this. I'm going to let Alonzo decide if this is a food crime or not. What is your crime? Well, Dr. Oz, you caught me. I'm guilty of my crime, which is a pickle. It's called Pickle Pete. It is a peanut butter pickle sandwich with a twist oh. of jelly. No, it's so good. Oh. So good. Well, that, Alonzo, please taste that. Oh, my pleasure. My, is this mine? Yeah, you, get, you get the big one. I'm getting the small one. You're going to eat it, right? I, I'm going to try it. Okay. How do people in your life react? Even the thought of putting pickles with peanut. Who would do this, by the way? No. You, there's two people who would. <laughs> maybe, maybe they didn't hear the question. Who would do this? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, get it right. When you, who when taught you, you to do this? <laughs> well, I love peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> it's, it's really good. I love peanut butter and jelly. And I love pickles. I thought, why not? The sweet, the tangy, the savory. So um, my friends were... <laughs> My, mm. <laughs> my stomach hurts already. My stomach is turning. Yeah. I'm going to have to label this a food crime. Food crime oh, no. under his breath. His last <laughs> gasp of breath. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a food crime. Do not repeat this at home. Oh, All right, so weird food combination. Think about this, my friend. It's not a victimless crime. The act of putting, for example, pizza with pineapple can be <laughs> unforgivable. <laughs> Who likes... I'm going to ask you. Have, okay, keep your hands up. I'm going to play you a video from the people from Italy who were tricked into tasting this. Take a look at what happened when some Hawaiian pizza showed up on the doorsteps of some innocent people in Naples, Italy. Now, you guys all put your hands up over here. You still want the pineapple pizza? You just, those, they were being beaten up by the people in Naples. You saw that. What do you think about Hawaiian pizza? Right? Is that a crime against food? I don't think of it at all. I, it's definitely a crime against food. Thank you very much. Thank I keep you. saying, in my house, Thank here, you. take that over there. You guys eat it. I'm not gonna eat that. Ah, you eat it. <laughs> all right, up next, it's a food crime for sure. A food crime against ice cream that you'll be texting your friends about. That is coming up next. And a scientist weighs in on why we freak out over flavor. Don't eat it all at once. But as we go to break, here's a food crime from the food god. They're fighting over the pineapple pizza. Oh. I'm telling you, it's a food crime. What's up, guys? It's the food god. I am here to talk to you about the biggest offense, the crime of food mixing. One time, I saw a girl dip a chicken finger inside a cola at a stadium. She dipped it just like this. Aren't ate it. To me, this is the biggest crime against food mixing. Don't ever do that. What's the biggest crime you've ever seen? The latest on missing Colorado mom, Kelsey Barrett. Did you believe she was dead the moment you heard she'd been missing? Either dead or held against her will. Her fiance headed to trial. He was manipulative and enjoyed control. I believe he murdered her. Is there enough to convict? She saw the outline of a body that she believes was Kelsey. The details read like a horror novel. All new odds. That's coming up tomorrow. Do you consider it a food crime? I don't. I think what was surprising for me was the fact that the dish was both abhorrent and attractive at the same time. It tasted much like you would expect it to taste. It tasted like jello spaghettios. Oh, yeah, that looks crazy. Well, today we're taking a bite out of crime, food crimes. Tasting our, rather testing our taste buds by trying out popular, weird, and unique food combos that some find criminal. Like, for example, how many of you would have salmon in your ice cream? Hands up, salmon and ice cream lovers? Not one, two, two adventuresome souls. Our right, next guest is the owner of Salt and Straw, a West Coast ice cream parlor, the scene of this food crime. 
Can I describe what you are scooping out here? How could you even thought of doing this? Okay, so it's a cream cheese ice cream with candied salmon. And it's not my invention. I can't take credit for this. We work with local elementary students. In this case, fourth graders invented this flavor, and we try to stay as true as possible to her creation. It's a very confusing taste. Mm. It thinks it's not, aren't supposed to taste that. Anyway, we gave a scoop of this to the audience. Mm -hmm. They're the victims right there. Please, yep. please start tasting. <laughs> and, right, and then there's, a, there's a everything bagel too, right? In this? Yeah, you gotta like that cream cheese, all the spices, like candied bagels, some smoked salmon. So this is one of our classic flavors. It's a strawberry honey balsamic with black vinegar ice cream. <laughs> and we add a little bit of black pepper. This is an old Italian tr trick where you bring out the the herbaceousness with that black pepper and the acid just like amps up the sweetness. Mm. I'm not even gonna vote. What do you guys think? Put ha hands up, who likes the salmon, the everything bagel ice cream? We got three lovers that. How about this other, what is the balsamic vinegar? Yeah, the balsamic with the strawberry. Who likes that more? Oh my goodness, split up the middle. I... <laughs> Are you nauseated? No. No, no vomiting, nope. nothing? No. no. Stomach's okay still? I just give, so. us, give us some time. Tyler, thank you very much. Thank you. I gotta say, it's adventuresome. Uh, it is intriguing. I wouldn't, yeah. I still go over pistachio, which is my favorite ice cream. Sure. But I can understand why people might like this. Yeah, thank you. Good luck to you. <laughs> Keep asking the fourth graders for advice. Before we go, my next guest says we shouldn't prosecute food crimes at all. In fact, he says we should never yuck down someone else's yum because of our own biology. We're all different. Please welcome author of Cooking for Geeks, Real science, great cooks, and good food, Jeff Potter. Thanks for having me. Explain, Jeff, why I shouldn't be revolted about what happens. Why does odd foods appeal to some and, and disgust others like, like me? Well, so much of it's cultural. It's what you've been exposed to. So if you grew up with certain kinds of flavors, you're going to be familiar with them, and they're going to bring up positive associations, positive memories. Now, there's a second part here, which are, is also, of course, genetic differences. So there are some bio biological differences. For example, cilantro. Some people hate the taste of cilantro, and that's because of genetic differences where about 10% of the population actually tastes that in kind of a soapy way that doesn't quite make sense. My daughter Daffy's like that. There you go. Yeah, but I love cilantro. So then that's just genetics in that case. So something I learned getting ready for this segment, I always thought, many of you do as well, the taste buds are spread out like this on your tongue. You see that? But in, you see the sweet and salt is different place, sweet to the tip, salt in the side, bitter in the back. Well, it turns out it looks more like this, my friends. Here I built you a tongue, and you want to see what happens? You put something in your mouth that is salty and sweety and savory. You ready? They all light up because the taste buds are over your mouth and your tongue. Yep. I mean, the back is a little bit more bitter, but everything else is sort of mixed up. What makes the taste of flavor so complex is that we use all of our five senses when we taste food. As soon as it's our taste buds, right, we smell the food. Did you guys smell the ice cream over there? You can smell the salmon, the, the balsamic vinegar, right? So you smell the food, you see the food. I started running away, but some of them ate it. And, and, and all this is sent to our brain to process, right? And as the brain lights up, well, guess what happens? Right? All the kinds of reactions happen, some of them not genetic, some of them connected to yeah. the genes. So you make sense of it. So are there some weird combos you could predict based on what you know about the science of taste in the brain? Yeah, so we can start thinking about the different flavors here. And when I say flavor, there's really taste as of the tongue, so salty or sweet. So we take the, the pineapple and pepperoni pizza combination, it sounds so weird, but maybe if you had something else in your past where you had a fruit type thing, it was sweet, well that combination doesn't seem too far to imagine removing the pineapple and replacing it with some other yeah. sweet fruit. If you like pineapple and pizza, something traumatic happened. Well, it's, 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 everybody's got their own background. All right, thank you very much. All right, there's one more crime against food that I find to be a personal assault to my favorite vegetable. The assailant is sugar, the victim, Kale. Some of you have kale, kale flavored candy canes. All right, they're making it this Christmas. They're gonna be all over the place. Are you ready to taste with me? I want some honest facial expressions here. Ready? My staff wants me to try this live. I've never tasted it before. I'm a little, I'm a little, a little, I don't know, intimidated. It's like they took the worst parts of the kale and they put it in a candy cane, isn't it? Is there anything good about that? You like it? Look at this, this is the, right here. There's the picture of this story. I think, is it a food crime, my opinion? Yes. Am I a Grinch? No. Will I stick to kale salad? Yes. That's what I'm all about this Christmas time. We'll be right back. Up next, the milk wars are raging on. Dr. Mark Hyman is here to weigh in.
So should you go dairy-free or should you stick with good old-fashioned milk? It's a food fact check that may settle the score. I don't know if you guys really see it, but it's dropping. You've seen the videos. You've heard the headlines. Plastic in rice. Metal in baby food. That looks like lead. Cheese that won't melt. Are you not gonna melt? The big bacon cover-up. But is it true? All season long, the Dr. Oz Show is food fact-checking, unleashing the power of truth to find out what's really on your plate. Today, we're food fact-checking the milk wars that are going on right now. Some doctors and nutritionists were shocked when four big health organizations recently said some kids should drink dairy milk over milk alternatives. The news comes as milk alternatives have blown up. Sales have increased 61%, 61%, and shortages have sent people into a frenzy, right, to stockpile their favorite drinks. To add to this battle, the dairy industry has been pushing to remove the word milk from these popular milk alternatives, claiming they're not even milk, they're not really this. It turns out, milk wars are even dividing families all around the country. I miss the soy milk all by myself. The good thing about soy milk is it's thick, it's sweet. Now they may want to tease me, but, but they know soy milk is the way to go. I drink skim milk. I think it tastes the best and it blends well in my coffee, but all my kids drink all different types of milk. I drink 1% milk. I drink almond milk. I drink almond too. Almond milk is better. Almond milk is better! I'm team dairy. Nothing beats the creaminess of milk. Dairy is so much more versatile. I mean, seriously, what else are you supposed to make eggs, creamy pasta, and mashed potatoes with? I'm team oat milk. I like the taste better, and regular milk makes me feel bloated. The director of the Cleveland Clinic for Functional Medicine, Dr. Mark Hyman, joins us now. Let me just before, cut to the chase. Which milk do you drink, the well, expert? Uh, Actually, I don't really drink milk because it gives me pimples and gas. Does it really? Uh, yeah, but well, when I do, I like milk alternatives, which are coconut milk and almond milk. Those are my favorites. And when did you switch from old-fashioned milk? Was it before the pimples or afterwards? And why <laughs> well, did, and... <laughs> I didn't have any today because I have no pimples, so <laughs> see, I'm good. But the reason I, I actually avoid dairy milk is because the science that shows it's beneficial is kind of weak, in fact, it may contradict what people believe. We know from the science that it may not help prevent fractures, that it's not necessary for strong bones, and that it may be linked to many risks. For example, some cancers, autoimmune diseases, allergies, eczema, and digestive issues, and 70% of the world is lactose intolerant. So there are probably some people who should be eating dairy milk. Though. Who is that? Who, is there well, a group like yeah, that? Leading organizations have determined that kids under five should be drinking milk, not milk alternatives, because dairy they milk. believe, yes, dairy milk, because they believe that it, the nutrients in there are better absorbed by those children than the milk alternatives. But I think the jury's still out, and there are many leading scientists from Harvard who really dispute the guidelines that we should all be drinking three glasses of milk a day and the kids should have two glasses. Part of the reason I think there's, a, a, there's a, a desire to continue to use dairy milk is because there's rich heritage of milk consumption by humans. So scientists have recently uncovered that prehistoric babies also drank animal milk, these bottles you're looking at there, some of them are more than 3,000 years old, and I'm sure humans were drinking milk even before that. So we're gonna find out which milks are best for the modern man and woman. Let's go through all the options. And these are the original milk alternatives, right? We had soy, almond, and coconut, but we got some newer ones here. Oat, which is everyone raves about. And then there's pea milk. Yes. So tell us about some of these hot trends. Well, you know, the latest trends are oat and pea, which are kind of new sexy things. Oat's a little creamier. I tell you, I happen to love the oat milk, however, are they nutritionally as sound as you want to be? That's the key question. So our friends at Consumer Reports looked at some of the most popular non-dairy milk alternatives and broke it all down to help find the best ones for you. Let's start off with calories, okay? We'll put them up here. All right? Now, which milk has the least calories? And these are all unsweetened, by the way. We're not talking about sweetened ones, just unsweetened. Is it almond, oat, 
or soy? What did the research from Consumer Reports show when you did a calorie well, comparison? they showed obviously that almond has at least 25, oats a little more, 100, and soy is a little less, 80. And how does the almond milk compare to regular old dairy milk, generally? Well, it's, you know, it's not milk. These are not really milks. They're milk alternatives. So they don't have the same level of nutrients. They may not have the same level of protein. They might have more sugar or less sugar. So it really varies depending on the milk you're drinking. Perfect. All right, so good to go on. Now let's return to the next issue, which is the amount of protein. Because a lot of people drink these dairy or dairy alternatives for the protein boost they're hoping to get from it, which is in theory a good thing. So which milk alternative is the best? Let's put the numbers up there again. Well, the most protein is soy milk, which hmm. has seven to 12 grams. Almond's kind of low and pea is in the middle. So if you're looking for the protein boost, it's soy milk. And when it comes to direct comparison against soy, any concerns about that versus dairy milk? Yeah, again, I, again, I wouldn't be guzzling this as a drink because soy, if you consume it in large amounts, has various chemicals in it called phytoestrogens that can increase estrogen levels. And how about calcium? When you look at the, the comparison between all these with the calcium content, because I know that's probably the single biggest reason that, that consumers keep advocating for regular old dairy milk. It may be the reason these organizations are recommending dairy milk for yes. kids. Yes. Well, I would say first about calcium. When you look at the literature, studies that show that calcium intake isn't really correlated with stronger bones. So that has sort of been debunked. Mm -hmm. And that even dairy milk consumption is not associated with stronger bones. So that's an idea that we got that was based on sort of a faulty association, but isn't really true. So I don't worry so much about the calcium. I'd rather get it from where the cows get it, which is greens and plant foods. It's cut out the middleman. So Consumer Reports, interestingly, when they looked at all these alternatives to dairy milk, they found these actually have more calcium than the old-fashioned dairy milk. So how is that possible? Well, they add it to it. It doesn't naturally contain a lot of calcium when you use these milk alternatives, but when you add them to them, they actually can have more than dairy milk. But they're not necessarily the best forms, and I think it's better to get them from the original sources, which is greens and things like, even sardines with the bones or salmon with the bones. But if you're gonna, drink, if you're gonna drink dairy to get calcium, do you trust the way it's historically been absorbed in our bodies? Just because we at least know this gets in a little bit? Yes, we do, we do, yes. All right. <sighs> a little bit out of hymen. It's hard sometimes. <laughs> Up next, the milk wars continue. Which alternative had the most sugar? Because that may be the most important stat at all. I was surprised by the answer. Plus, which one is the best substitute for cooking and baking? This guy's going to teach it all to you. Stay with us. All right. We're back with our food fact check on the milk wars with Dr. Mark Hyman. So when it comes to milk alternatives, which one loses the battle when it comes to sugar content, which is unfortunately where a lot of these problems happen? Absolutely. Well, sugar is the worst in oat milk. Oh, no. Which has 17 grams in the <laughs> ones that have the highest. The lowest is coconut almond. They have about a zero to seven. So I would go with the coconut almond. If you're getting the oat, make sure it's unsweetened because that can be a little better. I, I love oat milk, and now I know why. You, yeah, well, it make sure it's unsweet. Sweet. Well, when they use it in the baristas and the coffee shops, it's often the sweetened stuff, that's why. But uh, get the unsweetened. All right, so what should we look forward to when we're shopping for the best milk? What do we look for? Always just unsweetened, that's it. Unsweetened, only unsweetened. And read the ingredient list because they can kind of cheat on there. All right, so we're going to find out which best new milk alternative is the most versatile in the kitchen now. Dr. Hyman has a brand new cookbook. It is called What the Heck Should I Cook? Brilliantly named. <laughs> happy, happy chef in the front. So what the heck can I cook with milk alternatives? Oh, you can is make the safe? best stuff. You can make pancakes, scones. You can make smoothies. It's awesome. So we're going to make my favorite, which is pancakes that have no dairy and no gluten and oh. no grains. Okay, so the secret ingredient, the best milk alternative he thinks for cooking is... Coconut milk. Coconut milk, there it is. And this is the light form, which has a little less fat, but a little less calorie, but still creamy and delicious. So there's no suffering here. So again, you're looking for light and unsweetened coconut milk. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna help with the eggs, you do everything else. He's okay. gonna make dairy-free lemon blueberry pancakes. Oh. Uh, he's my sous chef. So the first thing I do, Dr. Oz, very hard job, I know you can do it, break the egg. I'll do two at a time. All right. Okay. Except we only need one. Oh. Well. <laughs> Typical. You can't follow instructions. That's all right. all right. That's all right. We'll get him a job someday. <laughs> uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to whisk them. Do you think you can whisk it together? I'm, I'm a whisker. I can okay. whisk. You got to get it. Right, you whisk. You're Come on. Whisky. You got to get into it. you are. Like this. So you got to break the yolks. And then we got to pour in all the liquid ingredients. So we have coconut milk. And this is the coconut milk. It makes it nice and creamy. Higher, higher, higher. OK, that's really good. <laughs> Top chef, Dr. Oz. Top chef. Two doctors and all a right. chef. And then we so. have. Lemon juice, which helps it rise. And we have 
vanilla, right there, yummy flavor vanilla, and then honey, little sweetener, not too much. Yep. Oh, look at that. that this looks... is my honey, by the way. This is your honey? My honey from my bees. From your bees. From my bees. Wow, amazing. Okay, and then we put in the flour. First we have the cassava flour. Cassava flour is actually made from a root, and it's a great kind of starch, low glycemic, and it's got a lot of prebiotics, and it's so awesome. So we put that in and mix it up. Oh, you're good at that, Dr. Oz, look at that. And then we put in sifted uh, coconut flour. Why do you have to sift it? Uh, just to get the chunks out and a little salt, and, uh, and then we have this perfect pancake mix. This is all the ingredients here, by the way. I'm gonna give a little extra lemon, because I like lemon. We're not gonna use Dr. Oz's mix, because I don't know what he did there, but anyway. <laughs> we're gonna use this right. one, and we use a little coconut oil. And, oh yeah, help me with that. And we put a little coconut oil in there, which uh, is actually great for high temperature cooking, just a little bit, and uh, you just scoop one scoop in, and it makes about 12 pancakes with one recipe. And then what you do is you put the blueberries in, like this, you lay them on top, and nice, you can help me, Dr. Oz. And you put them smiley in. Smiley faces. Yeah, make a smiley face. That, and then three, four minutes later, they're done. Yeah, three minutes. Uh, are the, are the customers months. usually happy at your house? Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, nobody knows they're eating healthy, right? You don't have to be in deprivation. You don't have to miss out. It doesn't have to be a hassle. You can make a yummy, delicious now, food. Now, I made these a little bit of, uh, of uh, sea maple syrup, but do you need that maple syrup on these? Or are they you don't. Good? You can put like uh, apple butter. You can eat them plain. You can okay, grab, grab your plate. Sprinkle a little cinnamon on them. Grab your book. My book. Now grab the plate. I got the book. My okay, goodness. Fine. So hard to follow. Because I've got tasters over here. Joanne and Rachel are joining us for the bike club. They have been tasting the pancakes. First of all, would you have known that they were made from coconut milk? No, absolutely not. I'm 100% team dairy, mm -hmm. but these were absolutely delicious. Sorry, Mom. Sorry. They were absolutely delicious. Joanne, right. your thoughts? I love them. They are absolutely incredible. And I thought the coconut milk was going to be a little bit overpowering, but it has the perfect sweetness. Well, and I can't believe they're not grain. They're, uh, no. they're grain free. I've got to say, as competitive as we are, this is really kick ass. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very proud, very proud that you came up with this. Wonderful work as well. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Hyman. Fantastic book as always. And by the way, I'm going to post the cheat sheet with all the nutritional information of the different milks we discussed today on my Facebook page so you can share it with all your friends. You can also find this recipe and more on the milk alternatives at DrOz.com and in our Bite Club newsletter, which is very popular. Check it out. But most importantly, pick up a copy of Dr. Hyman's book. What the heck should I cook? Because now you'll know. We'll be right back. Congratulations. Thank you. Today on the dish on Oz, take it till you make it. We have simple cheese for box cakes mix, store bought pie, and even a low cal trick for your favorite sweets. I like that last part. Stick around. <laughs> if there's one thing that brings us all together, it's food. So we're calling everyone to the table to dish on everything from the latest food hacks and trends to everyday recipes you could make for dinner tonight. It's simple, it's celebratory, and most of all, it's about having a great time in the kitchen. Oh. What is going on? I'm trying to help. <laughs> Let's dish. Welcome to the Dish Shot Oz. So today, you don't need to be a pastry professional to create cakes and cookies that will impress. Daphne, what's on the menu today? Cake, clearly. <laughs> all right, you guys, today, we are faking it till we bake it. We are using store-bought cheats for all of our favorite sweets. And I'm very happy about today's show because mm -hmm. I have kind of a sweet tooth. I'm gonna show you guys how to cheat to make lower calories in all of your favorite baked goods. You guys are gonna love what I have in store there. Then Gina is actually gonna show us the cheater's pie every southerner swears by. Yes. And I have to say, if you like custard, you're gonna love this recipe. And the best part is it's using store-bought crust, so it takes it really easy. And first up, we're sharing the cheats to make boxed cake taste as delicious as homemade. Oh, yeah. Looks so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. While you're revealing all the cheats, I'm taking these over to the audience. Oh, Maybe some are, hungry huh? members waiting Ooh. for us. Ooh. Enjoy Don't yourselves. <laughs> so, I mean, this, okay. the smell of sugar that's in the air is really doing it for me right now. <laughs> sugar in the air. I, I know. You know, I, I, I'm hungry all the time just as it is right now. You know, <laughs> you, you, oh, oh, you come a little closer. See how there's this missing edge <laughs> <That's of sauce laughs> right here? <laughs> That's the yeah, truth, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder who did that. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to match the other yeah, side. Come on. I can't talk and watch oh, yeah. Hold on. So I do love cake. I really love cake. And um, John and I are coming up on nine. Oh, well, next year will be our 10th anniversary. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really love being married to him, and, I, and I'm excited to figure out what we're going to do for that <laughs> big anniversary. But the point is, I wasn't a bridezilla about anything 
except our cake. Mm -hmm. I was a total freak about this cake. I had like 12 tastings just to make sure we got it right. <laughs> it was taller than my husband. Wow. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, it was like a whole thing. The layers, okay, let me let me see if I remember. It was a vanilla chiffon cake with a dulce de leche frosting. Wow. Ooh. Ladies, if you wanted like a like a not too sweet cake. This was not the sweet. This is not the cake for you. It was so good. But Vanessa, I have to say, I feel like you rival me in this category. Your cake made it all the way to People magazine. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. So glorious. Oh, it's so pretty. That was uh, so a, a, we had an Egyptian-themed uh, wedding because we met in Egypt on the Nile on a cruise. Oh, so uh, those are lotus. Those are papyrus leaves that you know they're obviously sugar, but they were gold papyrus leaves that we did in kind of like a pyramid shape. How cool! Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it was chocolate with uh, raspberry. So I'm going to dish the details on this first cheat that we're showing you, one of which is to show you how to make store-bought cakes taste as delicious as homemade. This cheat, I have to say, is something my family's been doing for a really long time, and I talked about it for the first time when we revealed the cake we make for my dad every year on his birthday, which is German chocolate cake, his favorite. Oh, he loves yum. it. Oh, and yum, I, yum. And he's, oh. he's so cute. Look at him. He's digging into the frosting there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Everyone, the first question people ask me about my dad, they're like, does he, does he only eat yogurt with blueberry and almonds all the time? <laughs> and the truthful answer, guys, is yes. <laughs> Except for the German chocolate cake and my mother-in-law's ribs, which he also loves, yes. and pretty much anything right. my mom makes. Mm -hmm. But right. the real secret to this mix, to making moist, perfect, delicious cake, guys, is instant pudding mix. Oh. It is, oh, yeah. I can't even talk to you about how deliciously dense and fudgy this makes your cake. It, it um, obviously adds a lot of moisture, but it also adds a lot of substance and texture to it. Oh. Ooh, All right, I'm it. passing this to Jamika. What's your next cheat? Pass the torch. Okay, so now my cheat is sour cream, ladies. Ooh. Yes. The thing with the sour cream, if you think about it, it ha it's acidic, so it reacts with the leaveners and it kind of gives it that little oomph, that boost to the cake, and just gives it it's like a little bit more height to it, too. And it has that little tangy flavor in it, so you kind of mix all of that in. Ooh, and creamy. sour cream just mm -hmm. takes it to another level, you know? I'm gonna pass it on to you, Miss Okay, yes. here's I'm a coffee lover. So Ooh. instead <laughs> of water, take when you're one cup of water, use one cup of Coffee. Wow. Yes. wow. Wake that cake right. up. Yes. I never guessed that. Fantastic with chocolate. Yes. 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 Yeah, and of course, coffee. You, can, you don't really taste the coffee, mm -hmm. but it really makes it nice and rich. I was just going to ask you that. That's the flavor of the coffee come through the cake. No, no, just just a smidge, but it's just really, really good. It kind of really brings good. out that chocolate. Ooh. It feels, yeah. It's, uh, so that's all together. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm going to genetize it. Whoa. The next cheat, I'm going to genetize it. I'm going to use this underneath. There we go. Just cause it's a little better. All right. That's together. That's already mixed up perfect. That's, isn't that perfect, Ooh. right? Just take a spoon of this. And a waffle maker. Yes. <laughs> Who wants a cake? <laughs> well, look at a waffle. Uh, it's a waffle cake, so it that's bakes That's a good fast. tip. Yes. It, I love that. But don't you love that idea? Yeah. That is like the yeah. Because then you can have it just, everybody have their own individual cake. Right, right, right. Yes. No cutting, none of that. So this okay. is this is in place of slices. Everyone this gets their own waffle. This is in place of slices, yes. And the nice thing is also you don't have to worry about timing and testing your cake this way. This will nope. ding, ding, ding when it's mm -hmm. ready to be Good turned off. Good college tip. My daughter's yes. 19, sophomore in college. This is a great, I'm going to give her oh, one. Yes, give her one. Gina, Gina, I, I see one. your cheat. You see and, my cheat? You like I'm it? I'm going to raise you a cheat. Oh. 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 What's happening? What's this. happening here? What? It's a little oh something special. Oh right? my God. I turn your cake waffles into these ice cream yeah. sandwiches. Yeah. Oh my God. Ice cream sandwiches. Look at I, that. I never ever thought I'd be serving these on my show, but what here it is. Oh my God. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh my God. Oh There's enough for everybody. I mean, okay. I want a handle on this one. <laughs> If this was genetized, now I'm osmosized uh -huh. by yes. this entire thing right now. <laughs> you like it? Mm. Well, Great idea. That's what this is all about, right? Mm -hmm. Cheating the right way. Exactly. But you know, when I was in the audience, we got one more of these left. Mm -hmm. I ran into a very mm -hmm. nice young mm -hmm. member of the audience mm -hmm. whose mm -hmm. birthday is today. Oh, who's oh. that? 39th birthday. Happy Come birthday. on, we help with this. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Let's Come on go. over here. Let's go. Let's go surprise. Look at your baby bite. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm just going to my musical company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here she is. Come on, go. MK, is that you? Is this today your birthday? It is. And Good where are you from? South Africa. Oh! Now listen hey. carefully. This, is, this could be yours, but first. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. What's your name? 
DK. DK. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Let's see if she's happy. Oh, it's so good. Is she happy? Is she happy? Is right? We'll be right back, everybody. Yeah. That's a good birthday. Welcome back to the Dish on Oz. I am hard at work on a man-made, homemade pie crust, which is an absolute essential for anyone who wants to make Good pies. No, yeah. no, 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 Dr. Oz. Today we are cheating. What? Using store bought crust and other shortcuts showing everybody how to bake it until you bake it. But you keep rolling that dough and we'll check back on you. He looks good. You're doing a good job. I like this. I like this. But Gina, do dish the details for us on this cheater's pie that Southerners swear by. What's Let me going tell on? You. So, first off, this is the main key okay. store bought. Store bought pie crust? We're not fooling with all that foolishness and rolling it and rolling it. <laughs> no, you're giving, you're, giving the, yeah. you're giving the brush off to homemade? Okay. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. So we got our store bought crust, but we're going to use beans to weigh the crust down because if we don't, the crust will tend to get a little soggy. Right. So just put it in here, let it sit like that for just a little bit, and then we're just going to remove these. So you blind bake it. So you throw it yes. in with these beans, cook it up about halfway, a couple about minutes so that it gets nice and golden brown. See, just a little golden brown. See, yep, look at that. That's like, that That's gives you that crisp crust on the bottom, beautiful. which I love. Okay, so let's get started. So what are we we're making? We're making chess pies. Chess, chess pie. pie. Chess pie. Oh, sweet. Now, now, southern pie of the South, come now, on now. Where's the name chess pie come from? Yeah. Well, for me, my grandmother always made it. Like, she would go ahead and, I mean, any family reunion, yeah. if it was a repast, a new neighbor, mm -hmm. it was sort of like that gift you passed on to loved ones. Yeah. Okay. You know, and it always had that special touch. Yes. So my Nana does it. Aww. Aww. So we're gonna add in some That's eggs. that southern hospitality. I don't think anyone brings you a chess pie Let when you move into a new apartment <laughs> in New York City. Let me tell you, it's the, <laughs> like sweet tea. It's the the house wine of the South. The house you know what I mean? There you go. That's what you gotta do. This is why you have dew drop ins, because people know that there's some sweet tea mm. brewing or some chest pie happening. I know. Okay, and so we have eggs. Milk. Milk. Yep, add the eggs in already. Yep, mm -hmm. salt. Pretty simple ingredients. Always too. vanilla when you bake. You know, you always yes. need vanilla. Mm -hmm. And this time we're gonna add in a little vinegar. The vinegar is mm. gonna cut the sweet a little bit. Oh, nice okay. touch. Like that. Okay. okay. And we're gonna Good pour stuff. in some sugar. Oh, just some. <laughs> Woo. Hey, it's southern Woo. pie. It's got to wow. be sweet. Come That's on. That's right. There we wow. go. Yeah. So now, so you'd make this, I mean, like, is this a... Are y'all falling out about that sugar? Mm. Y'all think it's too so sweet? To... I am right with you. Honey, 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 honey. Keep going. Honey, honey, honey. Keep going. Keep in here. Oh, don't waste any of it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't waste, we don't waste in the south sugar. Okay, mm -hmm. stir that in. So you make this cake for new neighbors, but do you make it for, like, a loved one? Do you make it for a new boyfriend? Do you make it for something like no, that? No, I make it for my mom. Oh, you know, because my grandmother nice. made it for me, so it's like made for her, like a tradition. I love that. I love traditions, Southern traditions. Southern traditions. Mm -hmm. Wait, you did add some cornmeal and a bit of flour, flour. and mm -hmm. butter. butter. A lot of butter. A lot of mm -hmm. butter. Must have butter. Okay. And that's gonna go in for 50 minutes? These are going in, but my friends are already eating over oh, there. Oh, we're eating, We've sorry. already started the but party, huh? Ooh, don't let any And I tell you, the great thing about this pie is you can decorate it any kind of way. Some people do chocolate. You Ooh. can do blueberry, Ooh. blackberry. You put coconut in there, too? You can do coconut, oh. exactly. Oh. That would be great. Like you want to put a little yeah. sugar on top, mm -hmm. but... How about a little sweet for my sweet? Put a little sweet. sweet. There you Come go. Just you know, we always need a little extra accessory. It just makes it pretty. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, honey. See, baby, we're done. What do you mean you're done? I just need the cry pus. It looks like a pizza. Done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> no, we don't need that, sweetheart. We're done. Oh. Can, Can I show you something? Can I show you like a slice of it? It is good, and you taste that little bit yeah. of vinegar, the, the little bit of acid that comes through, so it's not super, you? super sweet. Mm -hmm. Wow, delicious. And that crust on oh, top. The Ooh, crust is good. I love the cornmeal. It gives it a little texture mm -hmm. in each mm -hmm. bite. I love that. And this whipped cream on top? You can use whipped cream. I decided on powdered sugar. Do you want some whipped cream, too? Why not? Right. You know what? I love it, girl. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to pass the cream, but this recipe is to die dead. for. <laughs> Gene's recipe is at DrOz.com slash the dish. Check it out. Next, a sweet Yum. sheet to cut the carbs and the sugar. Yum. Finally, the newest sugar substitute that everyone is talking about. And get this, it is keto friendly. Cut the carbs. Mm. Carbs, yeah. The latest on missing Colorado mom, Kelsey Berry. Her fiance headed to trial. Is there enough to convict? She saw the outline of a body that she believes was Kelsey. All new odds. That's coming up tomorrow. We're back with the 
Dr. Shadar is talking about our favorite treats to help you enjoy those sweet, sweet treats that you all crave. Mm, and I have one more shortcut. I am so excited to share. When it comes to baking cheats, we're not only looking to save time, sometimes we want to eat our sweets without the guilt. So today we are making death by chocolate, not carbs, Ooh. cupcakes. Oh, you're, you're going, you've been rolling pie crust, you're frosting cupcakes, you're just after When you were today. a child, this is how you would do your frosting, like this. Oh. Ah. We won't do it now, we won't, oh. that's literally, it's how much you want. What show is this? Yeah. <laughs> right. I know, I do love it that way still. Um, the secret ingredient that makes these cupcakes both low carb and low sugar, you guys, is Swerve Sweetener, a zero calorie natural sugar replacement. Mm. And it's perfect. For anyone who's on keto or trying to cut their sugar intake, which I feel like so many of us are, but we don't yep. want to give up our sweets. And the best part is Swerve measures cup for cup just like sugar, which makes baking with it so easy. You're not having to do any math or conversions. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I make a really basic chocolate cupcake recipe, which I have here. And I'm, I also used it for the frosting, a basic chocolate frosting. And I just swapped in my Swerve for the sugar. So I have almond meal, I have coconut flour, cocoa, baking soda, and some salt. And I'm whisking that together with my eggs here. And then as this starts, oh, you're just, you're getting fancy over here. I, and feel, like, I feel like Salt Bay. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sprinkle Bay, Sprinkle Bay. <laughs> I added in some um, almond milk as well. And you of course can use regular dairy if you prefer. And now it's time for my Swerve Sweetener. You guys, this is made from ingredients found in fruits and root vegetables. And the part to it that I really love is it doesn't have that kind of bitter aftertaste that so many other sugar replacements can have. And again, if the regular recipe called for a cup of sugar, I just added in a cup of Swerve right there. All right, so bring this batter quickly together. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, it's fast. And the finished version. We baked it up. My dad like decorated it like this. Let's give it a taste, see what you think. Elegantly done. We can take these home to your Whoa. kids. Mmm. Mmm. I gotta say. Mmm. That's, it fills your mouth and it, I don't feel cheated. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle of life. Yeah. I'm being cleaned by my daughter. It, it tastes delicious, and I'll tell you what's even cooler, you guys. This cupcake here has three grams of net carbs and one gram of sugar versus, <laughs> you're not gonna believe this, versus 35 grams of net carbs and 19 grams of sugar in a regular chocolate cupcake. I think that's called you having your cake and eating it, too. Woo. So everybody, yeah. thanks to our sponsorship partner, Swerve Sweetener. You all, the entire studio audience, is going home with a bag of Swerve Granular Sweetener. <laughs> You can find any recipe we dish up today on DrRoz.com. Yeah. Oh, the all the shareable picture on Instagram. Yeah. And yeah. Oz, we'll see you all next time. Thanks for being here.